everyone, Tim here. Welcome back for another episode on my Chicago Northwestern N scale layout. I know it has been several months since the episode number two, um, but you know, life gets in the way sometimes. But the good news is we're back and I uh, have some update and layout progress to report. Uh, I wanted to start this episode by showing you um, I have my P42, custom painted P42 back, and I also have my custom painted AM Fleet coaches back for that kind of first generation. Uh, 400 passenger lineup that I mentioned in the previous episode. I just tossed them on w one of the test scenery bases that I had done just so you could kind of get a feel for what they look like. Um, and I'm excited to do more with them. So if you remember when we last left off, um, I had laid out from any rail the, the printout of what was going to go on that first domino, the start of the kind of mini yard at Harvard. Uh, and that was really where, you know, as far as I had gotten in December. Um, since then, though, I was finally able to, you know, lay uh, the cork down. I just used cork uh, sheets um, because I figure for this whole area it's going to be uh, ballasted. Um, there was no need to do, you know, individual roadbed strips for the different tracks. Um, but I was able to lay those down, get those, get those down in, in a good shape. Just weighted down, gave it time to dry, um, so that way, you know, it would be a nice firm fit on that foam uh, base that I was using. Um, while I was working on that, uh, I got the switches in that I needed, so that way I could progress further, which was great. Uh, and then after that, uh, I started laying things down. So I started by laying down um, the number 10 switches, which are long, <laughs> as some of you commented on in the previous video. You know, the, I mean, just to run switches enough switches to go across all four tracks, uh, literally ran the entirety of the four feet. Um, but I wanted to get those down first because that serves kind of the basis for everything else. It would help make sure that the uh, straight sections were properly spaced, or so I thought. We'll get more to that in a second. Um, but then, you know, I went ahead and laid down the straight sections of flex track. And so basically, what I did was. Um, once it got into the yard or if it was the sidings, uh, I kept it the more old school wooden ties. You wouldn't be replacing those, obviously. Uh, but for the areas of the main line, both before and after the switches, I wanted to use the microengineering uh, concrete ties, you know, to represent what I mentioned in the last video that they would have updated the line. So that way there would be greater possibility for higher speed. Uh, train traffic and so I worked on that um, you know one thing that I regretted on that was I think I need to use track nails or something next time um, it didn't quite maintain uh, the straight line on the flex track that I needed I had to go back and, and, and relay down a couple of sections I noticed that it kind of bowed out at an angle a little bit um, which wasn't ideal and then you know I went through uh, and drilled the holes for the feeder wires uh, for each of the four for each of the four tracks, you know, I'm going to wire each domino uh, separately so that way I That way I can make sure that there's strong independent power for each of them and then obviously, you know, connect them all using terminals uh, And then after I was able to lay that down I went through <laughs> Not my best camera work because I had to kind of shove it under uh, under the the unit um, but just to start testing uh my work, I went through and just directly uh, fastened the feeder wires into the DCC terminal so I could check one track at a time. Um, I wasn't really happy with uh, the solder work that I did. I think either I either I don't have the best solder. Uh, I just ordered some on Amazon. It might not it might not have that that rosin core that you really need, um, or I just you know I don't have a I have a pretty cheap soldering iron so I ordered a little bit of a better one as well I just couldn't get seem to get the heat up um, the solder really wasn't fastening to the rail and the wire like I wanted it to and I couldn't tell if it was a temperature problem so after I after I uh, did a couple of the of the tracks uh, I, I, I paused because I was just kind of getting frustrated with it it didn't look like it was a solid like I said it just didn't look solid from what I've done in the past and what I've seen in other videos so but then you know I plugged it in and I tested it you're gonna see that it's gonna kind of confirm my suspicions I think I have a cold solder 
on these rails where there's some connection but it's not super strong i mean the nice thing is it'll be an easy fix so you can see i'm able to obviously connect it to the dcc system the locomotive's running but you can also see with the lights it's it's sporadic it runs into some power issues when i tried to reverse it here uh it it wouldn't i had to like nudge it um to get it to get it to, to connect again uh and so you know it's progress um, but it's definitely something that i'm going to to need to work on um, to get it fixed but again the good news is i was able to make it work uh, for both of these uh, for both of the the two lines that i had soldered down uh, i was able i was able to get it fastened and, and good to go so that's that's the good news um, and again even with this with the front track here it, I ran into similar issues where it started to get in, inconsistent power pickup, and you know this locomotive ran great, as did this as did the system when I used the Kato track, which obviously that's a huge advantage of the Kato track is you don't have to really worry about that. It's got everything built in for you that you don't that you don't need, um, but it is what it is. So, you know that's that's kind of where that's where I'm at with this. Uh, once the new soldering iron and the 6040 uh, solder comes in, uh, I will redo uh, the solder jobs on the two tracks that I already did, and then I'll do the other two tracks, uh, and then I will finish. Uh, if you caught, you know, if you notice, I didn't have, you know, I don't have the the front yard tracks down yet. I'll get those down. And and finished, and then after that, uh, I'll be able to move on to I'll start working on scenery on this one and then I'll actually start uh, working on the second domino as well so that way we can actually do some movement some operations but next will be you know painting the tracks getting all that stuff ready for the sections that need it because again micro engineering one of the advantages is pre-weathered rails which is nice um, so I'll work on that for the other sections and then uh, we'll look at you know ballast ground scenery and all that stuff which will be cool so it's it's nice to, to kind of get back into it um, and to actually have some progress, uh, definitely some learning curves again with you know laying the track down in a way that keeps it straight and on track. Uh, but then more importantly, I really got to make sure I'm getting my soldering fixed. I, everyone that's watching this is going to know the importance of good electrical connections, and so you know we'll get that sorted out. But it will definitely not take five months for another update. So stay tuned, uh, and hopefully we have some more real progress next time, uh, and then we'll go from there. So. Make sure to like and subscribe, and yeah, thanks everyone.